Hi, it's Pip Mackay here and it's day two of my quest for the Holy Grail. Um, so what I'm interested in is really four different strands of the Holy Grail. And the first one is the strand of Mary Magdalene. And it's this idea that Mary had Jesus as child and that the Holy Grail is a bloodline that has been passed down and that ended up with the Medjerian kings. I'm not sure I can pronounce that properly. Um, and that, that bloodline went through um, all the way. And this idea that Mary came here um, in the first century. Um, so that's one of the interesting things that I'm wanting to follow and that's part of the reason why I'm here at Ren, Ren Le Chateau is because that's part of one of the secrets that was meant to be hidden in some of the documents here um, up the hill at uh, Ren Le Chateau. So that's one of the areas that I'm interested in. Um, the second area is this idea that Mary had a chalice and she captured the blood of Jesus um, in that chalice when he was on the cross. Pretty kind of gruesome idea, Jesus is dying on the cross and she's there collecting blood. But but anyway, that's another concept of the grail. Um, and so therefore the grail is an actual object that Mary possessed. So if Mary came here in the first century, then did she have the grail and where did she put it? Um, the second thing is um, the Knights Templar. So what what was the Knights Templar? Did they go to Jerusalem? Did they find the grail there and did they bring it back? Did the Knights Templar protect the bloodline of Mary Magdalene and Jesus or did the Knights Templar have the cup? And is the cup cup that Mary caught the blood in or is the cup the cup of the Last Supper? So that's also the Knights Templar. Uh, so what's going on there with the Knights Templar? Then the, the third one is the Cathars. So the Cathars is an ancient um, Christian order, a very early Christian order. They think that maybe they had the earliest Christian beliefs and were, were handing those down. And did they have the Holy Grail? Now, the Cathars are a very interesting Christian religious sect um, because they believed in the equality of the sexes. So they believed that men and women were meant to be equal. And this is a really interesting idea if you connect that then with Mary Magdalene as one of the first disciples disciples as seen in the picture painted by da Vinci where um where on Jesus's uh, uh, le uh, right hand side is probably Mary Magdalene even though it's been interpreted as a, a different disciple and this links in with the gospel of Thomas where which was excluded from the bible um, by saint paul but in that in the Gospel of Thomas, Thomas talks about Jesus kissing Mary on the mouth and that she was the first of all his disciples. So you can imagine that if the Cathars were a very early Christian sect and there was this idea of Mary Magdalene as being, um, you know, a partner of Jesus's, then we really see this this idea of the equality of the sexes coming through the Cathars. Um, so I think that's that's very interesting. The other thing about the Cathars is that they their philosophy was very much in tune with Pythagoras and with Plato. So that's very much the same as the lineage of archetypal coaching, which is the processes that I've created. Um, this, this idea of the lineage of the way that I understand archetypes coming right through from Plato and Pythagoras and the Hermes Trismegas school in Egypt and it's also interesting that in Neem there is a um, symbol of Egypt a crocodile with a papyrus leaf they interpret that differently but I found that very interesting considering the Cathars and their connection with Pythagoras and Pythagoras studied at the Hermes Trismegas school in Egypt so and also created the first commune um, you know, what's that, 6th century BC, where there was a, a really strong equality between the sexes as well. So it's all very interesting. There's all these links. Um, so, so, and the fourth one is um, this idea of... Um, of the Holy Grail as being a stone from heaven and that Parseval um, went and found the castle of the Grail which was at Mount Monsignor which is quite close by here. Um, so that's also another interesting thing and I've studied very much the Parseval um, story and I've rewritten it in my book which is still yet to be finished editing and be published. Um, so these are all the four links. Now I believe that all those links 
uh, come together in some way, but I'm not really sure how they do. But what is quite clear to me is that all of these traditions of the Holy Grail, even the stone of, from heaven, the Holy Grail is a stone, the stone's still in a chalice. So what's really clear to me is that all of these um, myths and concepts about the Holy Grail are all about the sacred feminine. And you can understand the Knights Templar with their swords and with their spears, which is obviously a masculine phallic symbol, and them being in search of the Holy Grail, these knights, and whether they're Knights Templar or whether it's Parseval and, you know, the Arthurian concept of the Knights of the Round Table, which also come from this tradition of the Holy Grail, um, you know, with their spears and their swords. And what are they seeking? They're seeking the Holy Grail, which is a cup, which is obviously symbolic of a womb. Um, they're seeking the sacred feminine, which Mary Magdalene obviously embodies. Um, so I think this is really interesting and especially since, you know, the church during the Crusades had in a lot of ways lost this concept of um, the sacred feminine and there was a lot of violence and bloodshed, um, particularly the Crusades where they sacked Jerusalem and they slaughtered 30,000 people, men, women and children and the streets literally ran with blood. And it was interesting that after that, you know, you had the Knights Hospitallers and the Knights Templars sort of really starting to create a code of chivalry, um, really perhaps in reaction to this awful bloodshed, but maybe also um, influenced by the teachings that were happening in Jerusalem at that time. So at that time, Jerusalem was this melting pot of um, Judaism, um, Hinduism from India, um, uh, teachings from Egypt, um, as well as Christianity and, and the Essenes and all sorts of other sort of more ancient uh, Christian cultures were all in Jerusalem, all living in absolute perfect harmony before the First Crusade. And so there was a lot of learning there. And the Knights Templars and the Knights Hospitallers are most likely to be the ones who uh, found that knowledge and, you know, studied that ancient wisdom there and then brought that back through Europe. And it's really interesting that when they brought that back through Europe, we really see a bubbling up of a new age, which brought in the Middle Ages instead of the Dark Ages that was there before. And it was a real renaissance. And one of the other, the final thing, the fifth thing, the strand of the Holy Grail that I'm really interested in is this woman called Eleanor of Aquitaine, who I've literally been obsessed with since I was 16 years old. So she created in Aquitaine, which is an area um, more north from here, but she also came to a place called Pervert. Um, I'm not pronouncing that probably <laughs> correctly, but um, here, quite close by, she visited here. And she created the Court of Love in Aquitaine, um, where the troubadours came. Um, it was very influenced by the Cathar movement. Um, she was probably a Cathar herself. Um, and she married Henry II and gave birth to Richard the Lionheart, who went on the First Crusade. Well, not the First, I think the Second Crusade or so. She went on crusade herself, um, uh, ages, like um, earlier, obviously, than Richard did. So, um, so these are all the interesting strands. I don't know how they come together, but that's what I'm seeking. And today I went on a kind of a pilgrimage. I walked to Renault du Chateau from La Maureen here, um, and, and it was the most amazing walk. And you can see here, it is just starting to sunset and you can see the mist um, coming here. It's really just incredibly beautiful. And, um, and I'm staying here. So, yeah, so what I was saying before is this idea of the knights with their lances, the masculine seeking the sacred feminine, which is, you know, the womb. But there's a deeper, more symbolic meaning of all of this. I just want to show you this beautiful house, uh, place I'm staying. I'm staying in a little caravan. It's so cute. Um, but anyway, yeah, there's this deeper, um, more secret meaning to all of this. And that's a quest that we're all on. And that is... Um, the conscious mind has always been symbolized by um, the masculine. The masculine is the conscious mind. 
And we use um, the mind, which the sword has always been symbolic of the mind because the sword dissects and cuts away. Um, and also the spear, the willpower, um, these are all very masculine concepts and masculine devices. Um, and our conscious mind is seeking the Holy Grail, which is our unconscious mind, the womb, the darker aspect. And you see here at Ren le Chateau, this idea of going into the cave and finding the treasure in the cave. And I'll talk more about that tomorrow when I'm um, up there. Look how cute this is. Look at that, so cute. There's a little, the bathroom facilities and that's my little caravan. But I'm staying right here near all this forest, which is just so stunning. Um, yeah, that, that our conscious mind seeks the holy grail of the unconscious mind and that when it seeks that we you know we find the treasure inside the conscious mind we're able to bring that treasure to light and actually use that treasure and that's really the secret of the holy grail I'm interested in because in the end the knights of old always went on this internal journey which has always been what I've been, I've been interested in this in internal eternal journey where we seek inside ourselves the holy grail which is really inside of us um, so that's what I'm going to talk about today but tomorrow I'll talk about Ren Le Chateau more whilst I'm actually up there and um, I'll talk a little bit about the treasure that he found and all the secrets and mysteries of that okay bye